On this visit, the property's occupant was still alive. A recluse, he's isolated himself for over three decades. A concerned city official has been making frequent house calls. The man has been living here all alone ever since his parents died. Water and gas have long been cut off, and he looks emaciated. But the man still refuses any help. Ten days after the official's last visit, the 56-year-old man was found dead. Cause of death was presumed to be malnutrition. In Japan, it's believed over a million people are living lives withdrawn from society, so-called hikikomori, more than half are middle-aged and older. Elderly parents in their 80s are supporting grown hikikomori children in their 50s. It's become clear hikikomori aren't simply young loners, as once assumed. As Japan's population continues to gray, the plight of recluses who long remain hidden from view has entered a new disturbing phase. A growing number of hikikomori right across the country are being found dead, seemingly unable to cope by themselves. Here, a woman in her 60s was living with her mother in her 80s. The daughter was found dead just two weeks after her mother was hospitalized. The former employee of an international company had been a hikikomori for more than four decades, ever since quitting her job due to illness. <laughs> the remnants of her final meal. Our independent survey of local governments nationwide revealed over 300 cases of hikikomori deemed at risk of dying. Out of sight, people are quietly dying unnoticed dying without even asking for help. Why are such deaths becoming ever more commonplace in Japan? In an increasingly interconnected world, those who struggle to connect are falling through society's cracks. After decades of living in isolation, this man eventually starved himself to death. Today, there's someone making frequent visits to the house he left behind.
Makioka Jiro is the deceased man's brother, just two years his junior. On hearing that his brother wasn't answering the door, he immediately rushed to the house. Having not seen him in five years, his brother's appearance had changed beyond recognition. Makioka Shinichi, the elder brother, used to work as a medical records clerk. The brothers got along well and would often take their parents on trips together. But family relationships began to unravel after Shinichi lost his job. Shutting himself in his upstairs bedroom, Shinichi wouldn't speak to anyone. Jiro grew distant and had little contact with him during his final years. Shinichi became entirely dependent on his retired parents, who supported him on their pensions. But 12 years ago, both parents died in quick succession, leaving him unable to take proper care of himself. By the end, Shinichi was scraping to get by off the very last of his parents' savings. A notepad recording expenses and balance remaining was found near his body. Why didn't Shinichi ever reach out to ask for help? Why didn't he strive to keep on living? どういう気持ちで生きて亡くなっていったんだか。ここから見る天井の模様が兄の最後の見た景色だったとすると。うん、やはり誰かに見取られて見送られるという Just how widespread have such hikikomori deaths in isolation become? In 2020, we contacted the welfare support branches of some 1,400 local government offices in Japan. Among those that responded, we uncovered over 300 known cases of hikikomori deemed at high risk of dying alone. Moreover, in 2019, 72 hikikomori died, even after starting to receive local welfare support. Regional authorities are struggling to prevent the untimely deaths of their most isolated residents. 
This local welfare support office operates in the seaside city of Atami. In 2019, two hikikomori it was monitoring passed away. Ishibashi Mayumi was in charge of both cases. Having witnessed the deaths firsthand, she's deeply concerned that the same fate remains an all too real risk for those under her care. Today, Ishibashi and her colleague are visiting the home of a man in his 50s who's been rejecting help and whom they haven't been able to contact for the past month. The man has been without income for about half a year now, ever since his mother, who'd been supporting him, was admitted to a care facility. For someone in his situation, death could easily go unnoticed. うん、<笑> Ishibashi leaves a note expressing their concern. She inserts it between the front door and its frame. Cases like this one pose a real dilemma as to how best to respond. Staff from relevant departments gather for an urgent meeting. The elderly care department's last interaction with the man was when his mother, already in her 80s, moved into a care home. The disability support department can't get involved unless it can be determined he has a disability. The Welfare Assistance Department has no role to play unless he actually requests to receive benefit payments. The man's case slips right through the cracks of the welfare system. It's not within the authority of any department to help, however much they may want to. Due to basic privacy and human rights protections, social workers can't forcibly intervene without someone's consent. The meeting ends with no effective resolution in place.
Efforts are now increasingly being made to intervene earlier while the parents of recluses are still alive. Yet parents themselves have often long given up on any hope of improvement. A woman in her 80s lives here, together with her son who's in his 50s. Ishibashi has been visiting them for two years, but they're still no closer to finding a solution to their situation. When Ishibashi arrives at the house, the son, a hikikomori of six years, promptly leaves the scene. The mother was working part-time to support her son, but in the fallout from the coronavirus pandemic, she lost her job last year. Behind with the rent, she's being pressured to vacate the property but hasn't even been able to discuss the situation with her son. もっとひどい状況になっちゃったよってことを Family members all too often carry the heavy burden of care alone. Seventy-five-year-old Minoa Chieko lost her hikikomori son after trying to manage without seeking help. Osamu rejected all support, eventually dying at home, age 49, after three decades of self-imposed isolation. Osama's violence led Chieko to refrain from talking to others about her predicament. Chieko still treasures her son's final words to her that she wrote down. I'm sorry for being the way I am. I promise I won't hit you anymore. So please hold my hand, Mom. What is it that drives Hikikomori, like Chieko's son or Makioka Shinichi, to isolate themselves to the point of death? Shinichi's younger brother, Jiro, has always been self-sufficient, working as a taxi driver from a young age. He used to think his reclusive and jobless older brother had only himself to blame for his situation. Recently, though, Jiro has come to view his brother's lonely life and death in a different light. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken a toll on his business and even on his own social ties.
と思うことっていうのはありますよね、まあ、このコロナ禍の影響で誰がこうこのようなこう精神的に追い込まれるというようなこれは分からないことですから。Last year, Jiro hired a professional removal service to embark on the long delayed task of sorting through his brother's belongings. For the first time, he steps into the room where Shinichi was holed up for decades. A stack of old notebooks catches his eye. So, ten n i t e m e t a k a r a n m e m a a g e s k a n e Years before becoming a hihikumori, Shinichi was a hard working door to door book salesman. I can't eat and toby come to Tazan did Tavaka the show. The Konochi wa. 脈があるとか海藻だとか。buys horticulture books from time to time。their twenty-eight year old son loves books。the notes are a testament to the diligence Shinichi brought to his work。真面目に取り組みすぎなんじゃないんでしょうかね。決して兄に向いてる職種だとは思えなかったんですけど。それでも何か。ひとたび続けた以上は。始めた以上は続きたいなんていうような気持ちになったのかもしれない。Without the guarantees of a full time contract, Shinichi was always under pressure to meet sales quotas. However, he struggled to do so and was let go after just two months. In search of a more stable career, Shinichi studied for civil service exams and attended job interviews, finally, landing a regular job as a medical records clerk. What awaited him, though, were week after week of overnight shifts or overtime work stretching late into the night. Shinichi's health was affected to the point he became unable to continue. Buried deep in the stack of Shinichi's work notebooks, Jiro comes across one containing some more personal reflections. Employee, teacher, public servant. Is there nothing more to being alive? We just work and work and work, even to the point of destroying our own health. Until our heads are totally used up. Kareno no koshita memo gaki, oboe gaki nanka mo imasu to, yahari, shinken ni nayande ikite kitan da na to mo imasu. De aru ita de hito to atte hanashi suru kite no kota ga suki na hito de shita to. Eski konon de jishin kara hikomata to kota wa nai to mo imasu.
But what is stopping Hikikomori from reaching out for help, even when they're on the very brink of death? Perhaps those who do eventually accept help can give us some insight. Today's social worker Ishibashi Mayumi is on her way to visit one such case. This 60-year-old man withdrew from society after losing his job eight years ago. Following his father's death in November 2019, his funds dried up entirely. He had lost faith in society to the point he believed he had nothing to lose by dying. At the late age of 43, he had made the switch from working as a cleaner to becoming an office worker, something he'd always wanted to do. But he struggled to keep up with the pace of his new workplace, where efficiency was prioritized. He was frequently reprimanded by his boss in front of other employees. No one extended a helping hand to the 43-year-old newcomer. He felt driven to the wall psychologically and developed adjustment disorder, a form of stress-induced depression that eventually forced him to quit his job. Now jobless, he didn't want his kids to see their father stuck at home in his state, so he asked his wife for a divorce. But by now over 50, starting over from scratch proved a huge challenge. Feeling unwanted and unneeded in society, he felt unable to ask for help. Losing their sense of self-worth is leaving many hikikomori too ashamed to ask for help. One man in his 50s was unable to reach out after his father died. He ended up living with the corpse for a whole six months. The overwhelming sense of shame he felt for being unemployed prevented him from seeking help, even in the most extreme situation. He'd been made redundant after Japan's economic bubble burst in the early 1990s and never managed to find stable employment again. Throughout his struggles, he always felt he didn't deserve to receive help from others. The man finally got help. Only after a city official visited his home and learned of his father's death. For Makioka Shinichi, home was the only safe haven. Yet it seems even here he felt driven into a corner. 
his younger brother Jiro made a further discovery during the clear out of his family home. His late father's diaries. They describe in detail how Shinichi fell into a life of isolation, one which eventually drove him to his death. Jiro's father, Yoshiyuki, worked at a steelworks during Japan's post-war period of rapid economic growth. He blamed his son, Shinichi, for his failure to maintain a steady job. Argued with Shinichi over dinner again. Usually I try not to talk about his being out of work, but today I couldn't stop myself. He no longer seems to care what others think of him. I'm so ashamed of my son. I feel like crying. His own father's frustration pushed Shinichi deeper into isolation. I was angered by his impertinent remark and hit him. I think he got a cut in his mouth as he was bleeding after that. Shinichi eventually shut himself in his room and stopped eating regular meals. We rarely eat with Shinichi these days. He might be feeling ashamed for being out of work. What will become of Shinichi? Is he planning to die of starvation? Shinichi truly seemed to have lost the will to live. Shinichi says he didn't choose to be born into this world. I guess that really is true. We certainly didn't bring him into this world to make him unhappy. But was he simply destined to be miserable in this life? この家の中でどのように過ごしたらいいかっていうのは、兄何には随分悩んでいたんじゃないかなと思います。ひどい話ですけど、いなくなってしまえばいいぐらいさえ思ってたときもありますし。もう今となっては、たった一人の兄だった
The experience has forced Tanaka to reevaluate the way he engages with Hikikomori. Today, Tanaka is visiting a 45-year-old man who's been isolating himself from society for almost 15 years. His mental and physical condition have deteriorated as he continues to shut himself at home. He's become apathetic and rejects any form of assistance. <laughs> Tanaka didn't say anything to the man about finding work or receiving medical help. Tanaka is in no rush to figure out how to motivate the man. He never forces anything on him. あの、<笑> One man Tanaka has been visiting regularly is gradually rediscovering his will to live. Forty-seven-year-old Sato Makoto has shut himself at home for over two decades. On graduating from high school, he landed a job as a car mechanic. But he struggled to get along with his colleagues. Feeling increasingly isolated, he eventually quit five years later. Living off his parents, Sato grew despondent about his future. He even attempted suicide. で、職場から逃げたい。家族から逃げたい。で、最終的には自分から逃げたいってなっちゃった時に自分から逃げるためにはどうするってなった時に、あ、もう自殺しかないって考えちゃったんですかね。生きることが怖いじゃなくて、生
and even volunteer for the local welfare charity. Today, they're cleaning donated books to be sold online. They can take a break whenever they like. There's no quota to meet and nothing to prove. They also have plenty of time to get to know each other. Captain Tsubasa, do you During a home visit, Sato takes Tanaka outside and talks about his childhood memories. This used to be his father's vegetable patch. Sato says he too would like to grow vegetables here someday. って Jiro's brother Shinichi shut out those around him and seemed to have given up on life completely towards the end. Today, Jiro has come to Tokyo to meet someone who witnessed another side to Shinichi during that time, though. Shinichi had carefully saved two letters. They came from this woman, who used to work as a caseworker at a psychiatric clinic. Dear Mr. Makioka, it was great to see you again on Friday. It had been quite a while. I was glad that you came. Did you go to the hospital? I had been thinking about you since I saw you the last time. Shinichi, who for years shut himself off even from his own family, visited a clinic one and a half hours away all by himself. The woman recalls his very first visit to the clinic.
やっとのことでたどり着かれたのかもしれませんけどね。Concerned about Shinichi, the woman exchanged phone calls and letters with him for a time. Eventually, though, she lost touch with him. Shinichi was trying his best to live right to the very end. いかにこう人とつながりたいというような心の奥底で気持ちが残っていたと思うので世間様からこう褒められるということもなく自身の家庭を築くということもなくこうあまり生産性という面では社会に寄与しなかった人ですけれどもうんただまあ弟の身からすれば。それで生きる価値がなかったとは思いたくはないのでまあどういう形であれ、まあ、命は流れてほしかったという気持ちはありますね。In Atami, the Social Welfare Council has seen a sharp rise in people seeking help after losing work amid the ongoing pandemic. <laughs> Staff are worried the current environment could drive even more people into social isolation. Our technologically connected yet increasingly fragmented modern society is witnessing ever more people struggling to find purpose in life. You don't have to prove anything. We're just happy that you're alive. Such simple words of acceptance can make a real difference to so many. Social workers return to the house of the man in his 50s they're particularly concerned about. <laughs> the note they'd lodged in the front door frame is not there. ね、生きてるね。よかった。